Hello and welcome to Frequently Asked Questions about Premiere Pro. Today you're gonna learn exactly how the Essential Sound Panel works in Adobe Premiere Pro. So first, in the timeline, make sure a sound clip is selected. This can be music, dialogue, whatever. When you open up Essential Sound, you can actually tag your selected audio clip by assigning one of these audio types. Let's see what we can do with the Dialogue tab. First you'll see the Enhance Speech button. This works really well on old recordings, but I won't recommend it on your own podcast or studio recording. In my opinion, it makes your audio sound robotic. But hey, if it works for you, it works. Next, the loudness tab will match the loudness level of your entire clip that you selected. This is useful in a podcast, for example, where a person keeps moving away from the mic. This will make the volume different throughout the entire recording. And this feature will fix that. The repair tab can be used to reduce noise, rumble and hums from your recording. Don't overuse these features because it will make you sound like you're underwater. Same thing for the de-esser. This will lower the high frequency S sounds in your recording. Reduce reverb doesn't really work, especially when you're speaking full synthesis. The dynamics feature will compress your recording and expand the dynamic range of your sound. It basically brings the quieter and the louder sounds closer together. Watch out, this will also boost unwanted frequencies like noise for example. The equalizer will boost or cut out specific frequencies depending on the preset you choose. I'm gonna show you three levels of the basic 3D effect. And last but not least, you can also add a reverb to your voice to make it sound like you're in a church or something. Personally, I like to use the convolution reverb effect. I just get better results with that one, but whatever fits your needs. Let's see what we can do with sound effects. In the Essential Sound Panel, choose the sound effects icon as the audio type. And here, you can also use the auto match feature or perhaps add some reverb. The pen feature will allow you to move your sound effect to the left or the right side of your speaker. This is useful when you have cars driving on the left side of your screen, for example. However, I don't really like this because you can't animated like you can do in the effect controls. Now let's talk about processing music in Premiere Pro. But first I want to show you Audio, a music and sound effect library created by music producers specifically for creators like us. I just don't want to spend hours looking for the right music. With Audio, the sponsor of today's video, you can just click the lightning bolt next to a song you like and boom, you'll get an entire list with similar songs. I am a huge fan of the AI powered playlist feature. Audio will literally literally create a playlist based on your favorite songs. This saves me so much time, it's unbelievable. Besides music, you can find an endless amount of high quality sound effects, so you're basically set for life. Oh, and guys, you can get access to this music library for the rest of your life for a one-time payment of $199. Normally it's 500 bucks, but by using the code PremierBasicsLT, you will literally get $300 off. Unfortunately, this deal is almost gone, so you gotta be quick. Link down below. All right, so I have this music clip in the timeline. Now, if I select it, I can choose the music audio type in Essential Graphics. I mean, in the Essential Sound Panel. Now, again, you can use the Auto Match feature, which is useful if you have music that changes in volume a lot. Next, you can remix your song, which basically makes it longer than it actually is. But please don't use this. I'm gonna show you a much better way in a second. Next, we have Audio Ducking. This feature will duck your song against speech, sound effects, other music or basically anything you want. By adjusting the sensitivity and duck amount, you can choose how aggressive the ducking will be. All you need to do is click on generate keyframes and let Premiere do its thing. Your audio clip will now look something like this. Pretty useful. Now about that remix tool. Instead of using the essential graphics, go to the toolbar and click and hold the ripple edit tool. Then from this list, choose the remix tool. Now all you need to do in a timeline is click and drag your clip for as long as you want. Premiere will then use a AI to make it longer and it actually sounds really good. For the stretch tool, you also shouldn't use the essential sound panel. All you need to do is use the RAID stretch tool by pressing R on your keyboard and then dragging your music like this. This way you can stretch or make your music play faster. It doesn't really sound good on music, but for sound effects, this is a lifesaver. For example, this whoosh effect. It's way too long for my actual transition. Well, all you need to do is use the RAID stretch tool to make it play faster and there you go. Next, we're gonna learn how to mix your voice with your background music in the next lesson right here. Thank you guys so much for watching.